All right, welcome back fifth graders. Today's lesson is on classifying or naming triangles. Now previously we had talked about naming or classifying quadrilaterals, which got to be kind of confusing and there were a lot of different categories or names that we could give to quadrilaterals and a lot of those quadrilaterals did belong to multiple groupings. Um, when you talk about the very specific quadrilateral of a square, we realize that it really belongs to every one of those categories with the exception of a trapezoid. So you could call a square a rectangle, you could call it a rhombus, you could call it a parallelogram. Um, any number of things could qualify or put into that category. Triangles are a little easier. Triangles have two different categories or names that we will place them into. And one is naming them by their angles, and one is naming them by their sides. And I'm going to start with the angles today because I believe that to be a little easier um, because we already know uh, what kind of angles exist out there or at least what kind of angles can be um, created and used in our triangles. So if we think back, we have angles that are acute angles like this angle right here. We have square angles and we have obtuse angles all right so we have those three angles and those are the same exact three names that we will give the triangles based upon those angles and the video hopefully that you watched yesterday guys um, kind of demonstrated this in a very unique way and I'd never seen that done before uh, so I was kind of interested by it as well simply by adding the last side to this triangle uh, we can create these triangles based on the angles that we see here and simply then add the label triangle after it so as I look at this acute angle here, simply by connecting the two points or the two vertices there, um, we can see that we have created an acute triangle. And again, that could be any number of ways. If we can uh, connect the two points of this angle, we now have created a right triangle or a square triangle. Okay, I, I say square, excuse me, this should be a right triangle. Okay, um, and then the last one is obtuse angle, and we simply connect the two endpoints to create that new triangle, and we now have created an obtuse triangle. And literally the only thing that has changed is adding the extra line and then adding the label triangle behind it. Fairly straightforward and fairly easy, hopefully, to remember. The sides on the other side, or other hand, are much more confusing and the names don't mean as much. One is a little easier than the rest and that is sides that have all three or a name that has all three sides the same and in which case we might say that all three sides were equal. So as we name this one or one of the possibilities we are going to be thinking about the word equal as we come uh, together with this and so we are it's not spelled the exact same way, okay, but it does sound the same way um, in the fact that it is equal lateral triangles have all three sides being equal. And very appropriate that the triangle C here actually contains that right here, right next to it. And we know that all three of those sides are equal. We don't need to pull out a ruler. Um, oftentimes in geometry, guys, they will let us know that, like they did with the quadrilaterals, that all three, if they contain the same amount of marks on each side, or um, if they don't contain any marks, it tells us if those sides are equal or not. So by having one mark on each side of that triangle, we know that that is an equal lateral triangle. The other two, like I said, are definitely not as easy. So we have the first triangle that all three sides are equal. The second option is when only two of the sides are equal. And in that case, we have an isosceles triangle. Again, I'm going to look up the spelling just to make sure that I am giving it correctly to you guys. Okay, the isosceles triangle. And that is a situation in which only two 
of the three sides are equal to one another. And triangle E that we are looking at right here is an example of an isosceles triangle. Seeing a single mark on each of these lines, but not one on the third line. That determines or that dictates to us that there are two sides that are equal there. And then the last one, again, not sure where the name comes from, and I'm sure there is a, a deeper meaning behind it, but we are just kind of in the process of having to try to remember these names, and that is when none of the sides are of equal length, and you don't see any marks along the triangle, and that is a scalene triangle. And again, triangle F, which is right here, would be an example, can't trace on my lines here, would be an example of a scalene triangle because there are no marks indicating that any of these sides are equal length. So that is our prospect or our process for how we would name triangles and the two different categories based on angle and on side. Now, oftentimes, and in most cases, guys, we want to be as specific as possible when naming those triangles, so we will use both um, categories to actually name a triangle. So as we look at the triangles on this page, and there are 12 of them, okay, we're not going to do all 12 of them, but as we look at the 12 on this page, each of them is going to have a two word name, or three if you include the word triangle behind it. All right, so as I look at triangle A, all right, right up here, we should see based on the sides that we have two marks that are um, on these lines, and that should be an isosceles triangle, okay, the bottom line is slightly different than the two sides, and that we are now looking at the angle, okay, we do see that we have two acute angles, but that should not be our first judgment. To be an acute triangle, you can notice over here in our example, all three angles must be acute. If you have just one angle, that is different than being an acute, either a right or an obtuse, you have the opportunity or have the obligation to name it whatever that other angle is. So in triangle A, that would be considered an isosceles obtuse or an obtuse isosceles triangle. And again, I'm not sure if it really matters which one comes first um, in the grand scheme of things. And on the questions we're going to ask later, that should not matter uh, to you as you move forward. So. Triangle A is an isosceles obtuse or an obtuse isosceles triangle. As we look at triangle B, we are now looking at, again, doesn't appear to be any marks on any of these sides. So I can automatically jump down to that being a scalene triangle based on its sides. But I can see a little square placed in the corner indicating that that corner is a right angle. And so now I know that that triangle B should be a right scalene triangle. All right. And, or scalene right. Again, I'm not sure that there's any um, preference in which one comes first. All right. Last one that we are going to do together today, guys, and then we'll put a couple problems on there for you to practice yourself is triangle D. Again, I don't see any marks, which indicates to me that that is a scalene triangle. I don't see any angles that are marked with a square corner, so I can rule out the idea of it being a square, even though this corner down here looks like it could be a square corner. If in geometry, guys, if they don't mark it like you are seeing on these examples around the page here, if they don't mark it with a square corner, it is not a right angle. Uh, another way to test that would be to take a corner of something that you know to be a right angle, sheet of paper, uh, book, things like that, and to lay that in the corner and see if the lines go directly up the sides. But we're not seeing that and I know that this book would indicate if it was there. So I'm looking at one angle here being acute, I'm looking at one angle here being acute, and I'm looking at one angle here being acute. And so in this case I'm looking at an acute scalene triangle. All right, guys, uh, thank you for your time. And again, hopefully this is uh, an easier lesson for you today. And uh, this should be the second lesson um, on triangles. And hopefully after this, we will 
um, be experts at naming triangles. Please answer the questions that follow this video.